Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the toast. Happy Thursday. Congratulations on making it to the latter half of the week. It's a great day. Happy Thursday, everyone. Yippee. Hey, hey, who's that? Who's that girl? La da 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 da. Hey, Jax. Hey, turdy, swirly, lurdy. What's going on? <laughs> Nothing much, my swirly, girly, twirly. How swirly are you feeling today? A little swirly. A little swirly. Did you have a nice evening? I did. You know what? I wanted to tell you. So Taylor Strecker's birthday was last night and her wife threw her like a really queen-like birthday event. And I think like you should adopt it for your next birthday. It was so you. Tell me about it. So maybe not all parts of it. So we <laughs> got there because you're not, I don't think you're like the first part, but we got there and we did like cocktail hour. They have like a really great apartment, like nice fireplace. It was not big. It was like really close friends and family. Um, and she had her favorite magician come and like do, li- not magician, like mentalist, um, do like cool tricks on everyone. And everyone was like gagged, like screaming while the in the kitchen, two chefs prepared this beautiful meal. Um, so maybe not, I know, I know you're not like into like mentalist magician things, but like it was a good, like, I don't know, it was fun, like kept cocktail hour fresh. Mentalist greater than magician, I will yeah. say. But no, I don't like, things I know but I do think you would have been impressed with this guy I had met him once before he was at Brian's baby shower his name is Phil and he'll have you know he'll take two people in the room who like do not know each other he'll ask one of them um think of the name of like a friend's pet like something so random something nobody in the in the room would know and at, through asking various questions he would figure out the name of the pet and then also at the same time so it was Taylor's brother who thought of like his childhood friend's pet. And then he asked Bo, Stassi's husband, these two people do not know each other, like personally. And he was like, look up any celebrity on Wikipedia, like yada yada. And he gave him like a certain criteria based on some of the things he had read from Taylor's brother, whatever. The dog's name was Calvin. Bo had selected Calvin Klein. Whoa. Yeah, it was like really kind of spooky. It wasn't even Whoa. so much magic. It was like, it was no, cool. Yeah, no, mentalism is cool. And mentalism is cool. And then we just sat down for dinner. They had like this really beautiful long table set up in their apartment with like candelabras and flowers and there were candles all over the apartment. And we got served this like hella fancy meal, caviar, seafood hella. towers. Hella fl- fancy. Tomahawk steaks. And Taylor went out of her way to get kosher meat delivered from Park East for me, Ben and Margo, which was wow. so nice because like, all of our friends know we're kosher and like whenever we do meals there's always like a substitute you know like yeah. a vegetarian or a fish which is great but to get to eat the same stuff as everyone else oh my god it was it was overwhelming and they had like a bartender it was like really everyone got dressed up it was like really elevated and I was thinking I'm like this is what Jackie needs to do for her next birthday okay so I will do that for my 31st yeah. you'll come on down 100% I can have everyone stay with me yeah, you could have like, you know, a jazz trio in your foyer or something. A jazz you know? trio. That's what I need. A jazz since, trio. You know, you have a house, we could eat it outside. Like, yeah. It was really, it was like a gorgeous b- event. It's really gorgeous. I'll start making arrangements. Thanks for the idea. Yeah. And like the long tablescape filled with like, and she like had said something. She made like a little speech. She was like so happy, like people from all different walks of her life being together. It was like really nice. It kind of felt like a rehearsal dinner. Nice. Yeah, just an idea, throwing it out there, 31st. Appreciate it. What are you going to do for your birthday, Turdy? Oh, you know me. I I have this very complicated push Why and pull. Why don't you do that for your birthday? Yeah, actually, maybe. You have a nice terrace in your building. Yeah, you I wonder if they'd let me. I wonder if they'd let me. If you ask in advance enough, which like now is in advance. Yeah. No, I mean, I can't start. I'd like my birthday is one of the, the worst and best days of the year, you know? That's so turdy. No, I think a lot of people relate to that. I don't think that's a turdy exclusive. Okay. Wow, the judgment in the pause. No, I was just going to say something else. I was just going to take me on a tangent and like, okay, period. I'm not going to conf- I'm not going to conflict with you, turdy. I'm not going to do it. You're not? <laughs> but you love to. Um, no, I'm not. I'm I'm not going to do it. I'm gonna, you know, sometimes like you don't have to say everything. That's something I definitely have learned as I've gotten older, and I'm still working on it for sure. But whether it comes to like a conversation with human beings or something on the internet or just like something I want to post, you don't, you don't have to say everything. Yeah. So that's how I feel right now. Like, you know what, Turdy? 
Walk in your truth. Oh, that's like you calling me delusional. No, but okay. no, no. That's me having watched the rest of the Kelsey Ballerini interview. And towards the end, there was a lot of that. I have Walk to remain truth. true to my journey, but like her career. It's like, girl, you're a success. Like, just say that, you know? Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. And she's walking in her truth. And I'm walking um, in Turdy's truth today. Okay. Walking in, walking in Turdy's truth. truth. Da, da, da. That's such a good song. Yeah. So let's see what Turdy's Truth brings us today. Well, Turdy's Truth yesterday brought her a flight to Vegas. I wanted to update everyone. I got an aisle seat. Um, it's all the way in the back. I'm not thrilled. I'm not thrilled. But I got a seat. So I'll just, I got to take like a Klonopin or something. I got to go get a prescription for something strong. You have a Xanax laying around a little... I don't a little think I do rogue have a, Xanax, one of Theo's, perhaps. I don't have a rogue Xanax lying around. I, I you need wouldn't to, uh, know what to do on a clonopin, Turdy. You talk such no, a I big wouldn't. game. I wouldn't. But you're so paranoid. You think yeah. Turdy's going to be in the back row alone on a flight taking a narcotic for the first time? Yeah, no, I'm not going to take happen. a clonopin. No, you're right. You call me out hard, and I agree. Like, uh, I, that's not that's not even remotely true. She'll like, be taking a half of a half of Theo Xanax. No, I'll literally be taking like a half of a half of Benadryl and being like, it's not working. <laughs> um, but I am excited to fly Delta. This is the first time I'm flying Delta since my special is available on the uh, in-flight entertainment. So um, that I'm really excited to see. I wish I was seeing it from you know a Delta Comfort seat or a first class seat, but it's okay. I'm excited. Yeah, if the special's any good, you'll forget where you are. You'll be transported. I could watch it over and over. And next thing I know, I'm in Las Vegas. Right. And I didn't even notice that I'm smushed. Viva Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. Viva, viva Las Vegas. I love Vegas so much. It's just like so sexy. I told you a number of times like I wanted to come. It's so what? It's sad because I told you a number of times oh. I wanted to come on your trip with you. Yeah. And you just like, were like, yeah, cool. Sure. I was like, I said, yeah, come. You didn't like, like send I know me you the won't. deeds. You didn't send me anything. Like, I could have been there. Like, I would love to be there. Like, you weren't actually going to come. Ask a follow-up question. Uh, when are you flying? Saturday. Why not Friday? It's like a really long story. I'm not going to bore everyone on the <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I just felt uninvited, honestly. Oh, my God. Victim mentality. Okay, Morgan Evans. Uninvited. Like oh, we're going to talk about Morgan Evans today because the wheels of this story just keep on turning. Now, don't yes, they, Turdy? They do. So, we also, we have a great show because there is some news, a little extension from yesterday, the Kelsey stuff. But then also, to pick up where we left off yesterday, uh, we didn't have time yesterday for Dear Toasters, and I had three really good submissions picked out. Um, so we're doing it today so we can really dive in, help the girls. The girls need help. Yeah. And I'm excited. I fucking love Dear Toasters. Yeah, I'm excited too. And we have some really good stories that I think are going to spark interesting dialogue. So without further ado, do 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 here sure. are the fast five stories that are going to spark interesting dialogue that you need to know. Am I ready for these stories? Sure. These stories are brought to you by Modern Fertility. For a lot of us, the start of the new year feels like the right time to schedule doctor's appointments and check in with where you're at health-wise. But what about your reproductive health? If you've always been a, plan of fan of, a fan of planning ahead like us, figuring out... Um, your plan for kids is super important. And that's why Modern Fertility was created. It's an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. Mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within six business days. You'll get insight into your hormone levels like your ovarian reserve, which is basically how many more or fewer eggs you have um, than the average woman your age. And you'll get other important health factors that can impact your fertility. The results go deep into what every hormone means and you can also download the results to review with your doctor for next steps. Traditional hormone testing at a fertility clinic can cost over $600, sometimes more, but modern fertility tests are the same general set of hormones for only $179. Plus, if you go to modernfertility.com slash toast, you can get $20 off your test. Plus, you can get reimbursed for the test through your FSA or your HSA. So if you want kids today, tomorrow, or maybe one day in the future, clinically sound information about your body can help you make the decision that's right for you. And again, right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com 
com slash toast. That means that your test will cost $159, which is a fraction of what it would cost at a fertility clinic. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash toast. That's modernfertility.com slash toast. Today's episode is also sponsored by Kitsch. 2023 is the year of good. Feel good, do good, and be good to yourself. Kitsch makes feeling good simple with luxurious game-changing essentials that beauty enthusiasts swear by. Because hair care is the new skin care. So whatever your budget, whatever your skin type, and whatever your hair type, Kitsch believes you deserve little indulgences at affordable prices. Started in 2010 by selling hair ties door-to-door, just a hustle and a dream, Kitsch is a self-funded, female-founded, and now carried in over 20,000 retail locations brand. Their bestsellers include satin pillowcases, satin caps, and eye masks. So the satin is vegan and cruelty-free. They're so good for your hair and your skin while you sleep. If you wake up with a rat's nest and you're like, I wonder why, I switched to a satin pillowcase for my smelly pillow. It's from Kitsch. And it has changed. I actually did not even go over my hair with a curling iron this morning because I usually, like before my satin pillowcase, I had to do a fresh new curling iron blowout look every morning for the toast. Not today. Thanks, satin pillowcase, because I really didn't have the energy. They also offer um, heatless satin curling rollers. So I bought these before Kitsch was a sponsor because I was influenced on TikTok. You don't want, if you don't want to keep damaging your hair with heat, um, use the heatless satin curling rollers. They're a fraction of the cost of like a curler. Uh, they're $18 and they really, really work. Right now, Kitsch is offering you 30% off your entire order at mykitsch.com slash toast. That's right, 30% off anything and everything at mykitsch, M-Y-K-I-T-S-C-H dot com slash toast. Again, that's mykitsch.com slash toast for 30% off your order. Start taking care of your hair and Kitsch is a brand you can trust. Like as simple as that, wench. As simple as that. As simple as that, wench. Thank you so much, Trudy. I just wanted to pull something up because it's germane to the first story. Okay. Which is about the big story of the week. More news coming out. Page six reported yesterday that Kelsey Ballerini allegedly cheated on Morgan Evans with Drew Taggart from the Chainsmokers. While Kelsey Ballerini and Morgan Evans' divorce has resulted in a he said, she said situation, page six can exclusively reveal what allegedly happened before the former couple's marriage fell apart. An insider claims to page six that the country pop songstress cheated on her now ex-husband with the Chainsmokers member Drew Taggart in August 2019 at Lollapalooza after having collaborated on their hit 2018 track, This Feeling. But page six says that Kelsey didn't come clean about it to Morgan until 2021. We're told the alleged why, aff- like that fuck that makes no fucking sense. We're like, told the alleged gonna- affair, combined with other issues, led to Kelsey calling it quits with Morgan last summer and bl- quote blindsiding him with her decision. Nobody's reps have returned comment. Okay, I have many thoughts. The mm-hmm. first is I don't believe this for a multitude of reasons. One, the timing is so suspicious. Like, and I feel like Morgan. I don't know if he necessarily planted this, but like, oh, it comes out right after Call Her Daddy. Like, okay. Two, that other part about it happening in 2018 and her not coming clean till 2021. Let's say for real, she had like an affair or just cheated one time and they got divorced in 2021 or like the Barrett, no, sorry, they got divorced in 2022 in August. So like six months prior, like why would you come clean at that point? Like the marriage is already, it's clearly ending. So like, what's the point? Maybe to like show that, how checked like he didn't even know I don't know I have so many thoughts I don't know what I believe I really don't but I I feel like I, I've been having a few internal arguments with myself okay. first of course when this dropped your initial inclination is like Morgan's team dropped it yeah but I don't know if I believe that because I don't know if Morgan's team would go to page six like he's yes. from Australia page six is a very national if not local publication like I feel like he would have gone to TMZ or Agreed. the Daily Mail just something like I, I, I feel like people in Nashville don't really put much stock in page six like it's really like a New York socialite like yeah like I I just don't think that's where he would go so I'm like uh, I don't know if it was him also there was a Dumois blind a while ago about this rumor that now Dumois has revealed is the truth I I'm inclined to believe that it's not true because that would make Kelsey like an actual psychopath yeah for doing an interview about the truth of their marriage, not sparing one detail when she missed a whole part of the story. And I don't think she's a psychopath. I do not. Agreed. I think the Dumois thing, it makes me less inclined to believe it, honestly. I kind of agree with that. And also, 
I feel like there's a chance that, and someone wrote this in the Toast After Dark, that she had said that they went on breaks, that they separated. Yeah, And yeah. there's a chance that during one of their separations, who knows what the rules were, that she hooked up with Drew, but that she wasn't cheating on Morgan. Like, maybe Morgan hooked up with someone, and, like, they were separated, and they it wasn't an affair because the rules were established. That's an amazing call. Like everything you just said, like I wish those were my thoughts when I first started speaking. Like you're everything you said is 100% right. And again, like you're you're right. If let's say this was true, she had this like long-standing affair and then she was out here doing interviews and writing EPs, like it's such a crazy thing. And let me tell you something not to brag. Like I know Kelsey Ballerini, I've actually known her for years. We're good friends. She ain't fucking crazy, you know? No, that would be truly psychotic psychotic especially because she doesn't owe us the truth of her marriage but right like she sat down and told us the truth of her marriage down to like you know the night she slept on the couch like if an affair was part of the dissolution of the marriage that would be something to mention and by the way you know when morgan evans was out here writing that song that started this whole thing I feel like if there was this big affair and he had known about it there would have been some sort of allusion to that like some reference something yeah but i think that perhaps if it if sometimes where there's smoke there's fire so like maybe the a part of this is true but it, everybody is speaking this is the truth it is true that kelsey say for example hypothetically I don't, know, I don't know what i believe yet it is true that kelsey and drew hooked up it is true that she did not cheat on morgan it is true that this affair had literally nothing to do with the end of their marriage because it was in time of separation where they would have been separated anyway what everyone chooses yeah. to do with that time is what they choose to do with that time it, but i would say if all of that is true it would have been worth mentioning on the show during our times of separation, I actually connected with other people, which showed me what I could be having with someone else. Yeah, or none of it's true. Or none of it's true. It's like such an obvious like thing, you know, like they had a song together. You know what I mean? Like, okay, they had a song together. Uh, you could do a song with someone and never even meet them, like for real. So that doesn't mean you're spending late nights. For sure, they, got, they did get a little specific. Lollapalooza, August, they're giving us time and place. Yeah, they okay, they performed together. They performed it together. Like I don't it's an uninspired it's an uninspired rumor. I stand with Kelsey. Hashtag I stand with Kelsey. So you don't believe this? No. No, I really don't. I'm i I'm inclined not to believe it on its face either. And I don't even think that's just my bias. I think it's like really I don't believe it. And again, honestly, the second that was like Dumois blind item reveal, I'm like, oh okay. It's yeah, not real. like it could have been the same person who sent this to Dumois who told it to page six and that person right. could be a liar. Right, and that person could have like ulterior motives. Yeah, or thinks they know something that they don't know. Right, so I'm, 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 not, I'm not living for this. I'm not believing it. And I do not think Kelsey is psychotic enough to do that. No, that's like diabolical behavior <laughs> and I don't think I know that that's not what we witnessed honestly no I agree like she was really like emotional during the interview there was like tears she laughed highs lows like that was a real human being like going through that was not so, like a, something a serial killer would do <laughs> I totally agree it's I, like I just I'm not I'm not believing it okay so that's where we'll stand on this yeah I wonder if anybody will speak, speak on out. it like, I wonder if Drew's like, the fuck? You know, I feel like Drew's like always getting dragged into like these <laughs> random PR things. He's just like kind of like an obvious choice. Yeah. Like the Selena stuff. Like, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like he kind of likes it. Especially, I think the chain smokers are about to have like a major comeback. They did take some time off. So I think any press for a chain smoker right now is good press. Especially this is harmless, you know, for him. It's like, yeah, party boy. Yeah. With a married girl. Like, it's not damaging because mm -hmm. it's very much a part of their brand. So I don't think he's mad. But it's just like, for me, it's like, I don't know why I was like, obviously Drew. Like, I just feel like he, that's his shtick. Yeah. I agree. And But honestly, there's no one who could like come out and deny it that I that would even like change how murky I feel about it unless Morgan said it's not true right right you know yeah but Morgan is like very slowly becoming the villain in the story because Kelsey's album is so popular and that interview was just really it was I think people felt a lot of empathy for her okay so she's she's coming out the hero yes and I just want to read this um hot take from toast after dark uh okay. our patreon facebook group because someone made a really interesting point that made me see the whole thing like a little differently and it's just worth mentioning she this from Alexandra she said this is a hot take it's funny because I don't really have a side I agree with Claudia and Jackie that in divorce in divorce both sides are each of 
Both sides are to each other, equally the villain, but I definitely was leaning more towards Kelsey. The more I think about it though, if the roles were reversed in this situation, I think people would be responding totally different. Like if Kelsey was the less successful one, wrote a song about the breakup of the relationship, and then Morgan, the big star, in turn wrote an EP, made a music video, and then did a deep dive interview on the private details of their relationship, no one would be celebrating Morgan like they are Kelsey. That is fair. But oh, you know, and they would be praising Kelsey for getting half the house. Yes, no, you're a hundred percent right. But that's why, and I feel like I've kind of been very clear about this from the beginning. Like I, I'm not a feminist. Like, yeah, it's different because she's a woman, and you know what? We are different from men, and you know what? I'm okay with that. Like I, yeah, you're right. It would be different, but I'm not an equal opportunist. Right. So I'm okay with this. But how are the equal opportunists? feminists feeling. wearing this how are they themselves. feeling like why are they upset that he got half the house like if a, if it was the woman like and she got half the house not even half of his big lucrative career i'd be like okay yeah no you're right if it was opposite i would have been like yeah kelsey deserves more but it's not opposite and women are different and we are not the same and it is different like ew you're gonna take money from a woman like yikes like we're different you know what and i'm okay with that like let's stop pretending okay Anyways, I thought that was interesting. No, it's a it. conversation definitely worth having. Mm -hmm. But I also don't find Morgan to be a villain in this situation at all. Me neither. But for people who don't know this, know him prior and like this is their first introduction, I think for a lot of people, they're just not taking his side. Yeah, I'm not taking a side. Like, I don't think there's a side to be taken. Like, really nothing crazy happened. Yeah, that's Really true. nothing crazy happened everyone they just grew apart they didn't have enough to keep them wanting to fight for this relationship and at the end of the day she didn't know if she wanted kids anymore like right. that could happen in any relationship where two people get married they want a family and then seven years go by and like if the woman is like I don't know that changes a relationship of course done period no like doesn't even matter about the CMAs and the couch at that point no you're right like it's not really about sides it's just not like hearing not, everyone out not for me it's honestly yeah. just about the human experience for me and about mm. the nature of relationships but then mm. also sprinkled with a little bit how success and hollywood and fame could impact those things yes for sure that's to me it's just all about the human experiment called life jackie that's beautiful thank you turdy licious you're welcome next up Little me actually we have two mean girls drama stories today. Like the movie or like girls being mean? Both. Oh, is this Kylie Selena? Kylie, Selena, Haley, they're all in it. Kylie Jenner denies silly rumor that she and Haley Bieber dis dissed Selena's eyebrows. Kylie Jenner is setting the record straight on speculation that she and Haley shaded Selena's eyebrows. The star, Kylie, called the rumor silly in a TikTok comment on Wednesday. She said, this is reaching no shade towards Selena ever, and I didn't see her eyebrows post. You guys are making something out of nothing. So Kylie posted a series of Instagram stories yesterday, like close up of her eyes and eyebrows. One picture is like a little funky. She goes, this was an accident. Then we get Haley's eyes and eyebrows. And then it turns out that actually Selena had posted something um, of her really overly laminated eyebrows saying like oops I overly laminated my eyebrows so people thought like Kylie and Haley's videos after that were like mocking like Selena's new crazy eyebrows but I didn't even think Selena's eyebrows looked that bad the the way these three TikToks had absolutely nothing to do with each other not Kylie's to Haley's not Kylie's to Selena's um and honestly here's what I've learned because this is like the second time this week we're even talking about this because a few days ago, people thought one of Haley's TikToks was a reference to Selena's uh, getting body shamed. And then totally separately, Haley had used a TikTok sound that's like, I'm not saying she deserved it, but God's timing is always right. Which is just like a funny, cute sound that's gone viral. There's like over a million uses of that sound. Had nothing to do with Selena. Selena's fans thought it was like, you know, Haley commenting on, you know, Selena deserved to get body shamed. And then Selena commented like, oh, it's okay. I don't let stuff get me down. Like kind of agreeing v that. Morgan Evans. Victim mentality. And now I think because Selena commented that on that, old, that thing last week, her fans are are looking for more stuff to see like people coming for Selena so in a way like I do feel like Selena definitely fed the the fan flamed fan the flames of her fandom 
last week and now that's why they're coming for Kylie and, and Haley again and no one was coming for anyone not one of these things is actually like a legitimate reference to anything Selena has done and honestly this is just like the toxicity of fan bases getting out of control again yeah also like Kylie's been posting a lot of stuff of close-ups of her eyes I think she's coming out with a mascara so I yeah, think, they're doing a Kylie Cosmetics like relaunch. I think that all the photos were meant to highlight eyelashes, not eyebrows. And it, she's in front of her pink screen. I think she's doing like a video with Haley. I don't even know. I'm not, I can't even try and understand what they're trying to do. But like she runs a makeup company. I wonder if Kylie and Selena, like obviously Kylie's friends with Haley. So she's team Haley. But like Kylie and Selena have their own little beef about like who's the number one beauty guru in this group. So I actually, not until five seconds ago, uh, thought about that too. Like that they both have these competing, really successful, like billion dollar makeup brands. I actually don't think they compete in the sense that like they're actually really different. Turdy, they compete. If an alien no, came down to earth, they would say these two things are the same. I know, but the way we didn't even think about the com competition of their brands until right now, I feel like really highlights how different they are. Why? I feel like all the time when we talk about how Kylie Cosmetics is out and Rare Beauty is in, like mm. we always talk about that. But let me just say, in terms of like actual competition, Rare Beauty is a Sephora exclusive brand. Kylie Cosmetics does not even sell at Sephora. They sell like everywhere else, direct to consumer, Ulta. Um, it's also, I think, like a little bit of a lower price point. And like aesthetically, like Rare Beauty is very like glowy, dewy, natural, clean girl. And Kylie Cosmetics is very like colorful, color pop, almost like, more out there than like that subdued honestly it's more dated in a sense like that's what makeup used to be like crazy color palettes and and now everything is like neutral and sad beige and that's very rare beauty yeah but at the end of the day like if I want to do my face full of makeup I can get the products from rare beauty or Kylie Cosmetics and I'll pretty much look the same it's just about yeah. how they package themselves like Kylie's very much like glam makeup Instagram makeup rare beauty's like you're beautiful the way that you are but here's a little makeup <laughs> yeah when I say if you could do a full face of rare beauty or a full face of Kylie Cosmetics what would you do? I th think Kylie because I like a little more coverage. Okay, I like 100% would choose Rare Beauty, which is like so crazy to think about. Turney, like, we should do a vlog. You doing a full no, face. But that's the thing. Kylie doesn't even have foundations. She doesn't have like a full. Yes, she does. Foundation? I'm pretty no, she sure doesn't. she does. She has concealer. I mean, now her website's down, of course. Oh, wait, no, it's back she, up. It's back she up. She has concealer, but she does not have foundation. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, face. Blush, bronzer, highlights, setting powder. Mm. It's not like wait, a but full. but like, where's concealer? You know? And I know they're in this like rebuilding phase, so it's maybe not fair to compare, but like, I definitely think Kylie Cosmetics definitely dropped the ball in a major way. They were like, you know, really on the cusp, the cutting edge of everything. And then they just kept doing the same thing and like didn't evolve with trends. Like that cut crease green eyeshadow look is like not what people are into anymore. It's very much like the Charlotte Tilbury rare beauty, like glow, shiny, like dewy look. And honestly, I wouldn't even know how to do that with Kylie Cosmetics. They just like kept doing like Grinch collabs. Yeah, but that's also could be Cody, you know, and whatever yeah. things they need to check off their list. Yeah. So they are in competition. No, they are. You're totally right. Even though I, I don't even think it's a competition right now because no, like Rare no. Beauty is supreme. No, but don't count out the Kylie. No, I won't. And I'm sure, I know they're in this rebuilding phase, even though it's been taking like hella long time. Um, and I hope that she's, she's like always been on the cutting edge of like trendy makeup. So I don't know how her makeup brand doesn't reflect that at, like at all. Yeah. They, they definitely need to like step it up. Cody's like kind of fucking it up and like dropping the ball with the Kardashian brands. Like KKW Beauty was like reformulating, ne literally never came back. It didn't? No. I thought it came back recently. I don't think so. KKWBeauty.com. It's like not loading. Right. So it's like, what the fuck are they doing? They spent $2 billion on those brands and, and, and what? I don't know. So that's a conversation worth having. And I feel like actually, if I wasn't doing this for a job, I feel like I could actually like do a really good job working at Cody in like strategy for these brands. Like, I, What would your strategy be? Like they need to get with the times. Like it's so dated, like for me. For sure, but like how so? Specifics. Okay, so Kylie needs to like drop this like very Jeffree Star 
like um, aesthetic. It's very like colorful and pigmented. And I think even when, when that was the vibe, I don't think the formulas were that great. And so she really needs to like evolve a little bit in terms of like what the makeup trends are right now, which is like more glowy, more dewy, less full coverage, more fluffy eyebrows and neutral tones. Um, and actually KKW Beauty was doing that when they were in stock. But it was like a little, honestly, a little too before the trends. And people have said that like the KK, everyone was like guffawing over Kylie Cosmetics. But like real makeup experts know like the KKW Beauty formulas were the best, like so good. But like everyone was, like the packaging wasn't great and everyone was like obsessed with Kylie at the time that they were like not noticing KKW Beauty. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what, honestly how the two brands are going to exist if they are. They should really... Cody should should merge them. Yeah, but like, what about people like me who who like still to have coverage on their face and don't want all of a sudden like want to be looking like you know the end of a doorknob? Okay, shiny, shiny. I, I feel like you have like a really big misconception of what like the the current trend is. It's definitely more natural, but it's still like hella full coverage. For real, like I know you think like Rare Beauty is like a dot on your face. And, no, like, I have Rare. I like the Rare pro Beauty products that I use, but I use them in the way that I use Kylie stuff. Like I look like, but hey, like that's what that's what everyone does. Most people aren't like wearing no makeup. It's just like it's a lot of makeup to look like you're wearing less makeup. Mm. That's like the the trends right now. Got it. I don't take trends with my face. Okay. I don't do trends with my face. I do what looks best for yeah, girl. A hundred percent. And I'm not alone, but I'm also not everyone. So by the way, back to my original point about the Selena fans here. I just feel like they are really toxic. No, they need a life. They need a job. They need a hobby. These people have too much time on their hands to evaluate every video, compare it to the other one. Just like get off the, the internet. These are like the fans that like bullied Haley Bieber into doing an interview. Like these are the fans that jaily. Like these are those people. And honestly, like Selena engaging with them and like agreeing with their yeah, Haley's coming for me. Like really is like feeding the the farm animals, which you're not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it make it makes them even more empowered to keep going. And that's what's happening now with Kylie. They really need to stop. No, and, and honestly, also like if if Haley and Kylie ever are shading selena intentionally like i'm not gonna believe that that's what they're doing because like it's like the boy who cried wolf no and it's like let me see it if i ever like i'm uh, maybe they would and i'll take a look and see if that's what they're doing no i'm that's just gonna assume happening. that the jelena stands are reading into something yeah. because that's what they're always doing selena's been like kind of going rogue on social media recently yeah it's i think these comments you know being like this victim me victim are in line with her going rogue on social media yeah. just like take the phone away yeah 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 are you ready for our next story yeah mean girls drama the mean girls stars original stars may not return return for the new movie over disrespectful money offer so original plastics Lindsay lohan rachel mcadams amanda seyfried and Lacey shabbard have all agreed to return for the new mean girls musical movie but wow. talks have stalled over paramount's disrespectful money offer the stars of the original 2004 classic have remained friends throughout the years and were willing to return for the film which is bringing the broadway musical version of mean girls to streamer paramount plus quote the production source says paramount Pictures doesn't want to pay the girls what they are worth. All four girls are willing to come back, but Paramount has not been respectful of what they are worth. Uh, page six is told that Rachel McAdams, who played Regina George, was initially offered a larger part than the other, a larger mm. sum to play um, a part in the movie than the others, but the deal had not been signed off. And as of now, all negotiations are stalled. Tina Fey, who both wrote the movie and musical, is reprising her role as math teacher Miss Norberry. She has reportedly signed a seven-figure deal for her acting role. She's also writing and producing the movie, while the girlies were said to be offered a fraction of that. I mean, it's so interesting because I think if they want to negotiate well they should really all be negotiating like as a team even though like why would Amanda Seyfried and Lacey Chabert get the same like in this current you know climate get the same pay pay it's actually crazy when you think about like how that film launched really launched Amanda Seyfried 
Rachel McAdams. Lindsay Lohan was already a star, and then she went on after that to be like just as big of a star as everyone else. And like Lacey Chabert kind of got left behind. Like she's out here doing Hallmark. She's a queen of Hallmark. She's a queen. I'm just saying, like, she's a queen of Hallmark, and Rachel McAdams is the queen of the Oscars. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. Honestly, sure, you would think you want to be queen of the Oscars, but I think she has a nice life. I think so too. Uncomplicated. Who's happier? Who's happier? Um, I have so many different thoughts about this. Like on the one hand, yeah, they should be as a group. They kind of do all deserve the same. Because also the three, like Lindsay, Amanda Seyfried, and Rachel McAdams are really big stars. They deserve roughly the same. And ergo, Lacey should get the same. She shouldn't get less. And they have the same role. Not one of them is like a star. I guess Lindsay Lohan but technically, but it's no. It's unclear if they would be their original characters. They might just be like, cameos in the background like a nod to the original mm. film which kind of makes me depressed yeah. but also seeing them as their original characters would make me depressed like I don't want to see Regina George as as like you know what I would like the superintendent like no I, I think it would be cool if it's their kids but then it's still the focus is on them. And I think the Mean Girls musical is just the sto- the same story like they, we have Janice Ian again we have Katie it's oh, not, oh, you're right. They're not writing oh, you're a right. new movie. Oh, you're so right. You're right. They're just going to like play people in the background, which is just going to make me feel old and sad for real. Like, even though it's nice that they want to be on board, I actually think like it's a little, it will be a little weird. Let me say how I could see it going that way, but I actually really trust Tina Fey. Like, oh, for she sure. doesn't put out shit. You know, she's not putting out crap. She no, doesn't and, do but anything it makes just sense for, for money. Tina Fey and um, Mr. Duval to play their original parts because like that's a no-brainer you could be a teacher forever but the girls don't really fit into the story mm-hmm. and I feel like trying to make them fit would be a little distracting and a little sad when there's like the new we have the new crop we have a, Renee Rapp is playing Regina George oh like, is she in the movie Renee Rapp yeah she's in the movie we announced Queen. the cast um a while ago we have Andre Rice who's playing Katie Heron uh Oh, Aluli uh, Cravalho, who played Moana, is oh, playing yeah. Janice Ian. Mm-hmm. And Jaquel Spivy will play Damien. I think it's so like interesting and sad mm-hmm. that Ashley Park is not in it. From She plays um, in Emily in Paris, the friend, I forget her name, the friend who sings. Yeah. She, got, she blew up because she was in Mean Girls on Broadway. She has like, an amazing singing voice. What? I have a fun fact, but continue. Wait, so... But she's not in the film. Who did she play on Broadway? Can you Google that for me? I'll, I'll Google it. What you know, I got it. Your, I got it. I'm already in What's the, your fun fact? My fun fact is that Aaron Samuels is going to be played by Jeremiah from The Summer I Turned Pretty. Oh, that's good. Perfect casting. Oh, wait, Jeremiah? The one that's the one. Oh, Conrad. Conrad, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so love that. And a lot of people were wanting him to be cast in... It ends with us. Like he's people really love him. I think that they're really attracted to him. Yes. Um, so oh, I love that they got him for this. She played Gretchen Wieners. Yeah, she was amazing. And yeah. people loved her. And she blew up. I know she's now in Emily in Paris, but I would love if she would return. But yeah, I guess not. She would well, you know what? I don't see a casting here for Gretchen. So it's up in the air. Perhaps. Jerry's still out. Also, she has an amazing singing voice, and this is a musical. Yeah, so I love that Renee Rapp is still being Regina. She's like turned into one of my favorite, from strangers to lovers to enemies. Um, love that. I love her in Sex Lives of College Girls. Like how cool she gets to work on a show like with Mindy Kaling and Tina Fey. I feel like that's the dream for like an actress. Mm-hmm. Like if, if somebody said to me like what, if you could be in any TV show, like what would you want? Like I would want it to be a Mindy Kaling production or a Tina Fey production. Like they're always successful. They're always actually funny. And then it's like iconic. Yeah. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So who knows what will happen with this? I don't I don't know. think I don't think the original cast members being in it will make or break it. Honestly. I would no, like not it at all. But how much not, you, how much do you think they deserve? And also knowing it's just gonna be a cameo, not, you know, a whole ass role. I don't know like what the market is. Like I don't know what cameos get paid, but like a million dollars. So Tina Fey got seven figures to act in it. Could and be a million, could a, be nine million. She's also the writer of the original film. It's like she owns the franchise. Yeah, but I do think, she, like the way that they worded this, I think she's getting paid separately for that. Because she mm. reportedly has a seven-figure deal for her acting role. Dash, oh. she's also writing and producing the movie, which is like Separate. other money. 
Yeah, well, she's in the whole movie. She's a main character. These girls would probably just be cameos. So if they're getting a fraction of her acting... That's simple math. They will probably work one or two days and she'd probably work a month. But they think they deserve more of being the originals and there are the names that they are. All right, so maybe it's not going to work out. And you know what? I don't think it'll affect it in a way that, you know, another in another franchise, like a major person not returning would affect it, you know? Oh, yeah, because they won't have major roles regardless. Yeah, I don't, honestly, it would be cool to see them all get back together, but like, I don't really care. I, like, because I want to see the musical. I actually never saw it on Broadway and I heard it was amazing. Um, So I want to see the musical just like period. And I don't think that'll change whether the four of them are in it. Yeah, but I also could be, think it could be like a no hard feelings thing. Like Rachel McAdams is like, listen, I don't get out of bed for less than a million dollars. Maybe if you can't afford that, then okay then we won't do it like it's not a big but deal. it has to be all or nothing agreed not two of them Lacey Chabert shows up with Lindsay Lohan and then the other two don't like no yeah no no but if it's just like a little cameo like why do they need like a huge payday if it's just like them like crossing the street or like they go to the mall and there's just like these women like having lunch yeah. like okay I do know. you need a million dollars for that like no like do it for the culture do it for you know? the culture Totally. Okay. Our next story, some exciting news. Is it some exciting news that perchance happens to be brought to you by our new sponsor, The Black Tux? Yes. Yes, it is. Because Let me tell you, I'm excited. Out, you'll find out why it is. Not to get all parental, but it's time we had the talk. You know, the one about that three-letter word that ends in X? You'll probably experience a few <laughs> times in your life. A tux. Well, when you need the tux, the best place to go and get one is the black tux. And by the way, I can attest to this because me and Ben did it because Ben, I feel like Ben has had one tux like since our wedding and it's just like, we tried to make it work. Like it doesn't fit anymore, you know? The black tux makes it super easy to get on trend, top quality, guaranteed to fit tuxes without ever leaving your house. So what you're saying, Turdy, is this I top know quality fabric? I knew you were going to say that. Yes, it's top quality fabric. That's all you need to know. Here's how it works. You will take the black tux fit quiz. You'll pick the style you want to rock and boom, your tux will be delivered to your door 10 days before the day that you actually need it. It's plenty of time to try it on, make sure that it wears well. And if the fit is not quite right, say hello to the black tux fit guarantee. Order a better size within a day or two of receiving the less than great fitting one and they'll send another one right away at no extra cost. If you'd prefer an in-store experience, the black tux has showrooms across the country. Their expert fit stylist will help you find the perfect style tux or suit and make sure it fits just right. So me and Ben did this. We took his measurements. We got the fit right on the first try. We were really shook. Ben was definitely skeptical. Um, it looked great. We went for like a more classic look. Uh, I know a lot of people love to like experiment and do like crazy. And that's great. We're, well, not me. Ben wanted to do something crazy, but I'm like, no, we're getting something classic. When we go to weddings, when we go to whenever you need a tux, it's always just like black tie. So we got something really traditional. It was really beautiful. It was made really nice. And I just really cannot stress how the fit was like fitting. Rent or buy, the Black Tux is the best place to go when you need a tuxedo for a wedding or a special night. And right now, when you go to theblacktux.com slash toast and use code toast, you'll save $20 off your order. That's T-H-E-B-L-A-C-K-T-U-X dot com slash toast, code toast to save $20. Theblacktux.com slash toast. That code is toast. Thank you, Turdy. You're welcome. Our next story, you know who's going to need a nice tux soon? Who? Phoenix Baron Hilton Room. Yeah. Paris Hilton is introducing the world to her baby boy and revealing the name that she's given him. On her iHeartRadio podcast, This Is Paris, the new mom revealed her baby boy's name, which is Phoenix. His name is Phoenix. And then his whole name is Phoenix Baron Hilton Maximilian Room. Um, everyone was like tagging me like Claudia you were right what did I say um okay that's kind of rude because I feel like it was me who said it's gonna be a city like I think I thought it would be a city and I thought it was gonna be like no something I actually think I said that no honestly. I said it because I was talking about that movie money Heist, the show money heist and oh how yeah they're all named after city so then I just started you know Denver honestly like uh, Denver is a very warm guess like yeah same and we region. also said it was going to be a name that was like a real name something that's like you could actually conceive of not just a, a bunch of letters put together mm -hmm. um and Phoenix is like Dorit's baby boy is Phoenix no it's like it's not like a super common name but it is a name it's not like a new word that celebrity made up and it's like it's a name yeah, Detroit like, if you're looking at baby name lists like it would come up yeah it's a name that's like a real name also a city like we hit all the points of what she was looking for of course my ultimate prediction was maximilian um yeah. 
maybe the next one I guess there's no city max no now it's like that's clear what she's doing it's like a theme and I like that it's also a P Phoenix in Paris like it's cute I like it a lot and it's also it was surprisingly normal yeah so this is what she said about it she explained that she thought of the name 10 years ago sharing the story while reading an excerpt from her upcoming memoir Paris so there's this is like a little you know um teaser Russian nesting doll of Paris's promos yeah on her podcast she read an excerpt from her memoir about her baby's name saying quote if all goes well by the time you read this Carter and I will have a baby boy we plan to name him Phoenix a name that I decided on years ago when I was searching cities countries and states on a map looking for something to go with Paris and London Phoenix has a few good pop culture reference points, but more importantly, it's the bird that flames out and then rises from the ashes to fly again. I want my son to grow up knowing that disaster and triumph go around and come around throughout our lives and that this should give us great hope for the future. Gorgeous. She also Gorgeous. explained that uh, his middle name Baron is a tribute to her late grandfather, who was always her mentor, Baron Hilton. Love. It's a very prestigious Phoenix Baron Hilton room. It's a... Uh it's a long it's a royal name it sounds I like it but it's also modern it's also very Paris and it's also very Hilton and I guess room as well yeah no it really it has it all I think this is a great I feel satiated satiated I like that she gave us an explanation because if I'd seen Phoenix I would have just been like oh it's a cool name but yes a Phoenix rising from the ashes yes Paris tell us more I really do I love that that metaphor about a Phoenix I really I think it's beautiful. I really do. And I think it's a very apropos in life. And I, I really love it. Who has that song, Phoenix? Gun rise like a phoenix. I have no Let idea. Let them see you rise. Hey, hey. You know it? Sounds like a train. It's Olivia Holt. I thought Sabrina Carpenter. There's no way so. I was going to know that. No, no. But I, I was thinking Sabrina Carpenter. It's a good song. Check it out. I think that's what uh, inspired Paris. Check it out. Are you ready for our fifth and final story? Yes. Giselle Bündchen has transformed for her first Vogue cover since Tom Brady divorced. Vogue Italia. But she Once a- again, American Vogue not getting the scoop for, you know, this the great American football star's wife, but okay. Right. And they could have had like a gorgeous shoot with her. Instead, she's on the cover of Vogue Italia looking edgy. Which oh. isn't my favorite. It's like the worst word to describe. Like if you ever, if I ever came into the room and be like, do you like this outfit? And you said, yeah, it's edgy. I would burn it immediately. No, like her hair is dyed red and I can be the first to say it doesn't look good because I am a redhead. But it's like bright red. She has red, thin eyebrows, Ooh. red lips, edgy. And, a, and a red dress. Honestly, she looks like a fashion clown. Yeah, she also doesn't look like herself, you know? No, she doesn't. Like, she's a gorgeous woman, and they just... And I get that she's a model, and you're supposed to, like, you know, be just, like, a muse in this blank canvas, but when you become a model who's also, like, a superstar, and you get known for being Giselle, not just being a model, like, you want to lean into that look. And also, the Vogue Italia of it all seems so random to me. If it had been, like, Vogue Brazil, okay, I would have loved that, you know? Yeah. But, I don't know, it just feels random. Yeah, there is one photo in the shoot where she's not being edgy fashion model doll muse, where she's being Giselle. She's wearing like a Dolce dress and her hair is her hair color. Um, And she, this should have been the cover shot. But that's beautiful. It's natural. It's sun-kissed. It's Brazilian. It's also fashion. But like if this were like, like she should have been on the cover of American Vogue, like by the beach, beachy waves. Yeah. Gorgeousness, Giselle, in my own words. Love. Giselle, life is not a game. No, that's not my favorite. No, but it's yes. like football. No, I get it. No, no, I don't think you got it. Let me think. Hold on. Let me think. Hold on. Like Giselle, touchdown America or something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hold on. I'm really, I'm, I'm tired. Just like give me a second. Giselle. I don't know. Sound off in the comments. What should the subtitle have been? Yeah, if we had a few more minutes, we could think of something like Giselle running into the end zone. Yeah, or like something about starting fresh. Yeah. But like in a sports reference, you know? Yeah. New season or something. Turning the other cleat. Okay, that's like a little too direct, you know? Okay, okay. 
Um, Something about a new season, like a new season of sports, you know? Yeah. What do they say about it? They say it's a new season, you know? That's what they say. Giselle has her Monday nights back. Mm, that's actually probably like a really good point. And Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. Right. Giselle getting her week back. <laughs> Instead, she's on the cover of Vogue Italia in an interview that um, is in Italian. And she's looking edgy, donning an all red Maison Valentino look complete with matching nails and fiery red hair and lips. And a string of other photos that you can check out for yourself. She also just went viral. I don't know if you saw this video of her dancing like a, a traditional Brazilian dance in like this crop top and low waist pants. No, sickening. Sickening. Was like she, Did she go viral for being sickening? Yeah. Love that for her. Yeah, and it's just kind of like the year of Giselle, I think. Yeah, but this photo just doesn't sum that up for me because she looks like any model who could be on the cover who's just being like... A model. A model, a chameleon, a chameleon. Like a blank canvas, a mannequin of sorts. Yeah, but like, is it about this Mason Valentino dress or is it about Giselle? It is supposed to be about Giselle. Because the dress is not dressing enough for no. me. It ain't dressing. It ain't balsamic. No, and honestly, the other pictures from the shoot are like so much more interesting. Even the edgy ones. Right, but the one they chose for the cover is not covering is what you're saying? Yeah, it's just... I like, you know, beautiful things. What can I say? You're kind of crazy like that. <laughs> um, so those are the past five. You definitely need to know all but the last, if I'm being honest. Um, no, but we had fun with it. And that's what we, had we fun. do here. We're not, we okay, we're, we're not like, you know, the news you need to know. Okay. After five I years. I said it. <laughs> I'll admit it. <laughs> but we're having fun. We're having fun. And the show's not over because it's Dear Toaster's time. Our weekly advice segment usually happens on Wednesdays, but yesterday was kind of crazy, um, where you can write in and get advice from your girls about anything that's going on in your life. It's always anonymous. So the email is deartoasters at gmail.com. We've got three great submissions today, and I'm, I'm ready to dive in. Are you? Yeah, let's do it, Turdy. Hello, Gen Z's big sister and La Turd. Over the past year, I've gotten into reading thanks to you hoes. I recently started posting my book reviews on my Instagram stories. On my latest review, I received a DM from a friend saying she thought she just bought the book and is so excited to start reading. But here's my dilemma. There's a baby girl that dies in the book and she has the same name as my friend's daughter. It's a somewhat common name, but not the usual suspects like Sarah or Emily. I know it'll definitely catch her attention. I know if I were reading a book and there was a child with my daughter's name who died, it would really affect me in a negative way. Should I tell her this beforehand or am I being too sensitive? Is it worth ruining a book she just paid money for? The death is pretty monumental to the story. I appreciate your help in advance. Sincerely, a literate girl's girl. Don't tell Ben. Oh my God, that's a really tricky one. I know it, that actually happens to me sometimes where people are like, would I like this book? And I know there's something in the book that will trigger this person just based on, and I'll say no. Right, but that, um, you could say, like if it was an event that happened, that's, you know, would be personal to that person's life, you could give a like a little bit of a warning, be like, I don't know if this would be right for you, just, you know, given everything that you've gone through. But this is different because that it's hasn't happened, but it's just like spooky and eerie and who wants to read that. Right. I don't know. I feel it's like a, it's okay. It's a name like Sarah, she said. She said it's pretty common, but not like really common, like Rachel, Sarah, Emily. It's not like one, but it's not like a random, like, Euciferous, you know, what are the Yeah. Euciferous. Right. <laughs> you know? Um, Euphigenia. But you don't want to spoil the book. I know, and she bought it already. I honestly don't know what to tell you. I feel like it's okay. Yeah. It's spooky ooky, but it's not triggering, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's just spooky ooky, but it's not like something that she can't handle because of something that she... Like, it's not what um, what I was thinking it was going to be, which has been like, she's been through something similar. Like, in which case, I always issue a trigger warning if, if it's a book that, like, of someone... Of course. Uh, but I, th I, I think you just... I think you just leave it. Sit this one out. Yeah, I agree. All right, next up. Hey, my girls, I adore you, and listening to the toast is the highlight of my day. Today, my boyfriend, who I've been dating for about six months, told me I'd gained a, quote, shitload of weight since we started dating after looking at an old photo of me. He then proceeded to tell me he didn't want to be with someone who was just getting fatter and fatter. How would you proceed? I can admit I put on 
a few pounds in the last six months, but anyone, if anyone knows, I know. I don't need him to berate me for one of my biggest insecurities. Sincerely, a toaster who loves her brownies. I'm just shook because it sounds like, based on like your question, how would you proceed, that this man is still alive. And, <laughs> and that's just unacceptable because he should be dead in a ditch, you know. And I would have happily been the one to help bury this, this lard, this fucking asswipe. In literally no world is this okay. You no. absolutely have to run. Especially to the run. part where, because sometimes men can be stupid. So him saying like, oh, you've gained weight. Like, okay. Sh- it wasn't It wasn't an observation. It was like a no, insult. The second half of, I don't want to be with someone who keeps gaining more and more than goodbye. Right. And to be honest, someone who's like so aware and like turned on and off by weight like obviously he has a mental illness yeah and that's so not and that would you even be notice with. a few pounds like it's so not someone you want to be with long term because life is long no and, and like if you want to have babies oh your my weight god is gonna fluctuate and even if you don't want to have babies like things happen like you get depressed you lose weight you gain weight you you know things happen i've never experienced a more clear dear toasters in my life six months goodbye yeah, it's not even that long term of a relationship. Like goodbye, you're you'd be better off being alone than being with somebody so miserable, and quite frankly, unwell. Yeah. Goodbye. Good day, sir. I said good day, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. Hey, Jackson Claude, I'm a Gen Z toaster here. I did not though find you guys on TikTok. I found you guys through Kenzie Elizabeth and the Snatchler. The Snatchler. This is so interesting, and I chose it because I think it'll spawn an interesting discussion, and I want to hear what people have to say in the comments. Okay. So I'm currently a sophomore in college. I'm 20 years old, and my parents are really against credit cards. I have a job and steady income, and I'm not in a financial situation where I really need one, but I realize credit score is objectively important as you get older, which means I should prepare now. I'm in a long-term relationship with a guy who's very smart financially. He has a great credit score, and he thinks that I need to start building my credit. I see where he's coming from, and I honestly agree. I'm leaning right now towards getting one just to use strictly for gas to build my credit. The only issue is that the card will deliver to my home. They don't deliver to my address at school. And I don't feel like... um, And I did not feel like telling my parents about the credit card. Do I have a conversation, or do I try and go home and snag it from the mail before they see it? sincerely a toaster who is sheltered and just needs to mature financially so I thought this was really interesting because obviously like you're an adult and getting a credit card is not crazy at all and like either just tell your parents or go sneak it like you don't oh you're you can fly on your own but I thought it was really interesting like really random like obscure kind of specific things that you grew up like not being allowed to do that like you grew up and realized like oh it's totally normal like everyone does that you know yes um so having a credit card it's not like demonic or anything no but I didn't have a credit card I had my own debit card I didn't have a credit card until like well into my 20s yeah I got my first credit card at 22 or 23 and then but I felt like I was delayed in doing that no I remember like even when I was living on my own and I was paying rent and I didn't have a credit card yet and I don't remember what. Oh, you know what? I got one when TPG came on the breath. So that's and what I was going to say. told us about that Sapphire one. And I was like, you know what? I do need a credit card now because I'm, I'm paying everything on a debit card. But for a while, honestly, I wasn't ready for a credit card because like I would like just run out of money at the end of the month. And I feel like if I had a credit card, like I would have spent money that I didn't have. It sounds like this toaster is pretty fiscally responsible and she has the boyfriend who's fiscally responsible. But you kind of can get carried away with a credit card and it's a lot of responsibility and I understand why your parents might be like you don't need one because it's just like just go and it, you want to build credit of course but like you're only 20 like you'll get there I didn't have a credit card till I guess I was 24 25 and I have a good credit now I'm 30 so I kind of see where they're coming from I wouldn't worry so much about my credit at 20 years old okay to be honest like you can get the credit card or not get the credit card. I think you can make an argument for both. I think getting a credit card is totally fine. As long as you're not racking up debt, you're paying your bills, you're making sure there's no interest, you're paying it in full, like you're fine. But I did want to know like what obscure things like you as a child were like not forbidden, but like your family just didn't do that. Like when you grew up, you realized like, oh, that's just like a my family thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like in our house, we literally never, not that we were, weren't allowed, but we just like, we're not taking Tylenol. Do you yeah, know what I mean? we're an Advil ibuprofen house. And like, even now to this day, like I know it's the same thing kind of, but like- Tylenol is sus. 
I don't know. I have oh. questions about. T- oh, and it doesn't fucking work. Yeah, right. I-, I have my suspicions about Tylenol. Yeah, me too. Advil works and Tylenol doesn't. But no, I'm still hung up in the credit card thing because you know what? I think back to it and like a couple girls that I know, I'm not going to name names, who are very responsible people. I know who you're talking about. <laughs> had And who had good, solid jobs, like w- salaried. Yeah. Ra- like a couple people I know racked up some serious credit card debt. Yeah, it was like a problem for them in their early 20s because you get carried away. You do. And like, you can't, you shouldn't spend money that you don't have. So with, why do you need a credit card unless you intend on doing that? Like, why can't you just well, be debit? Like, for, she for, is, she wants to build credit. Why? Why she now? she wants to buy a house. She didn't say so. Like, it's just because her boyfriend's telling her to do that. And like, I feel like he's saddling you with kind of a lot. And what if he's not going to be like around so like, you know, and things just kind of can spiral. Yeah, things can spiral. Like, I feel like it's really important to preach the importance of, like, financial health. And That's I what just, Brian's always saying. Like, do not do not get into the points and credit game if you are not financially healthy. Like, if you are in debt, it is not for you yet. Yeah, and there was, like, a while where even I, w- I was working and I was, like, paying my own rent, but I was not ready for a credit card. Same, same. I would have just and been I was, out having dinners that I couldn't pay for. Yeah, and I was even I was financially healthy at the time, but I don't think I was mature enough to like really understand the responsibility of having access to debt. Yeah, I think for a while you got to live with that debit card. The money that you have is the money that you spend. There is no in between. Yeah, racking it up, you pay it immediately. Like I kind of see where your parents are coming from. The only thing is, this girl, she didn't say should I get a credit card. She said should I tell my That's, parents or not. So that's what I'm saying. So I just want, I want to answer her question, but I also think it's important that we stress like to be careful with the credit card when you're young. Um, but I think she should tell her parents. One, she clearly cares what they think and you shouldn't ever do something that you, that you shouldn't be doing something that you feel is so wrong. So if you feel like this is what's right for you, you want to build credit, make the argument, let them know you are an adult and this is what you're doing. But Agreed. also like in the off chance that, you know, you do find yourself in a bad spot with it. Like it's better that they know that you had it instead of in a few years being like, mom, dad, I, I need didn't, help. I didn't listen to you and I need your help. Yeah, no, you're 100% right. And also, like, you're not doing anything wrong or bad. So, like, there's no need to lie. Yeah, I agree. Just make your case. You feel so certain that a credit card is the next step for you, then explain it away. Now, I really chose this because I want people to pop in the comments and let, let me know, like, what is a thing you just didn't do in your house that, like, you had an aversion to as you grew up and then you realize, like, oh, like, no, this is normal. Like, everyone uses this thing. Like, for this girl, it was clearly credit cards. Yeah. For us, it was Tylenol. For Lola from Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, it was microwaves. It was microwaves. I'm trying to think. You have any others? No, it was really Advil. Um, and it, it's that's, I don't know why this is like so ingrained in my memory. Oh, also tampons. You know, like we grew up in a house where it was like, you know, not, it wasn't forbidden, but it was like, you know, tampons just like always go with a pad. And then the, the older we got, like we all just decided to use tampons. We cup, a couple of us found ourselves in some sticky situations where you needed a tampon. Right, and then eventually, like, we transitioned to tampons. But I think that's actually pretty common because of TSS and, like, a lot of, like, the chemicals. In. I don't think that's actually, like, a crazy thing that was in our house. And I think that, like, when you first get your period, like, you should wear pads for as Agreed. long as you can. But I remember I was on a teen tour, and we were doing an overnight in the desert. Where, Oof. like, I mean, that's just hard whether you were using a pad or a tampon. But, like, yeah. uh, it was time for a tampon for your girl. Yeah. I remember the first time I needed a tampon, too. Where what was the situation? I think I was in Israel, and you know Israeli tampons. I was in don't Israel have... too. Oh no way! Yeah, my teen tour, and we slept in the desert. Israeli tampons don't have applicators. Yeah, that's. I don't know just... if that's just Israeli. I think like a lot of foreign countries. There are have... there are also like a, there are American ones that don't have applicators. Just... Right, so it's just like this. There cellophane. are also American ones that do. It's a piece of cotton wrapped in cellophane. And you just got to like kind of raw dog it. It's like maybe now after having had my period for 15 years, I could do use one of those and like, but to use it on your first, that's not what I use. Like my friends on the trip had tampons. So someone floated me one. Right. right, right, And I gave them a cigarette. (laughs) (laughs) It's like prison. Um, so that was Dear Toasters. Thank you to everyone who wrote in. Again, that email is deartoasters at gmail.com. We'll be back next Wednesday with that. And we're back next week. Oh, no, it's not Friday, is it? Oh, my God, not me, like, no. hopelessly. No, dreaming. and it's been a short week. Hmm. 
I really thought it was Friday, damn. Well, I'll see you guys tomorrow then. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to the Toast of the Millennial Morning Show where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast where podcasts can be found. So Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, Public Radio, everybody can all the places we have this podcast. Best of Chelsea Fester, you're beautiful, sending a wicked lit talented we are. Hope you guys have a gorgeous Thursday and we'll see you tomorrow for the best day of the week. Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. See ya then. Bye. Love ya. Bye.